Hello everyone out there in uh, YouTube land. So I had a question on making custom stencils that somebody asked me from the video, another video I just posted on doing mountains. So I wanted to show how to make some custom stencils that, you know, from pictures that you take and how you can use them in Art Rage to create uh, different elements and textures. You can layer them. You can sometimes use them just to create uh, different items. So I'm going to show you that here real quick. Um, using a an image that I took from my uh, cell phone of a cup of coffee that had some MCT oil in it. So uh, that's what I have uh, right here. So this is just a shot down into the coffee mug itself. I really like the way the bubbles looked. So I'm going to grab the selection tool here and I'm going to uh, go to presets and get hard circle and grab it and then make a selection here so you can do a selection a couple different ways one is you can do shift control and grab it and it'll pretty much kind of go out from the center there or um, you can do just uh, shift and um, grab it out if you don't do shift it won't make a perfect circle but if you do shift it will so once you've got it selected you can kind of move it around to get you a nice area that you like kind of like this uh, i think that'll work and um, just kind of play around with it. So this is, I think that's going to work just fine for there. So let me go up to edit and cut it because all I want is just that part. I don't want the extra stuff from the cup. And so now I've got that in there. And I'm going to add a layer and then just go to edit and go to paste. And I'll just keep it 100% like it is right now. So. Um, I don't need to resize it or anything, so I'll just click the check mark. That will paste it in there, and then, um, oh yeah, it puts it to a new layer on its own, I forgot. So, hide this layer, and as you can see right there, it's cool textures. So, delete this layer, I don't need it. And I'll go ahead and delete this one too, because I don't need it either. So... Now I've got this image by itself right here. Um, so I need to make a stencil out of it. So what I want to do is deselect it. And then go over here to file, go to export image. I'm going to export it as a PNG file. And you can see one up there in the right where I've already made uh, oil bubbles. This is where I was trying it out earlier just to uh, run through it. So I can show you guys. So we'll just call this one Oil Bubbles uh, 2. And click Save. Okay. So now I'll create a new layer and get rid of this layer because I don't need it anymore. Okay. So I'm going to go to Stencils. And you have all your different groups of stencils here. I'm going to go down to the one that I created called Textures. And um, now I'm going to import it. I just go and click Import. And then find the image that I just made. So it should be right there. It is. It's a Bubbles 2. Select that and bring it over here so you can see that it's going to import it into here. And there's my new stencil. So hide this panel real quick. And move this over. So you just push space bar to uh, grab it and move it over when you're over top of it. And then if you hold control and slide your mouse to the right, you'll resize it. So move this over here so you can kind of see where I'm wanting to go. But the first thing I want to do is lay down some base color. So let me just run over here real quick to, uh, I could use any tool, but I think I'll go with the roller tool. So to resize the roller tool, there's a couple different ways you can do it with any of the tools. You just double click on the percentage right here. It tells you the tool size. You can type in up to 500 pixels and then tell it OK. So I'm going to select a color. Uh, let's go with something, I don't know, kind of a weird color. about this little yellowish green color here? This some seems like a moon color to me. So just lay down a base. Um, the roller will start to thin out as the more you use it, so you'll get some of the canvas texture as well, which I think is kind of cool. So again, space bar, drag this over, put it where I think it's going to be a good spot, starting spot. And um, 
I'm going to invert it because what I want to do is um, get the other textures of the bubble. So uh, pretty much this stencil is, and I'm just going to keep working here. I'm just going to grab the eraser tool in just a second. And there we go. So, and just erase this. So the stencil is any part of it that is um, the reddish color. So like you see where it's pink, that's where it's partially transparent. So it's going to pick up right there. You can see that I erased the, uh, the highlights of it, which is going to give that. So let me just uh, reverse this back down. And I'm going to erase this extra stuff that I don't need out here as well. So, get all this erased off of here. There we go. And it, the erasure tool, you got to be careful because it will kind of go through it partially. You can see right there it did. Um, if you hit Control Z, it puts it right back where it was. After you move it, I like to move it, peek underneath it, and then hit Control Z and put it right back. So now what I want to do is I want to make a selection inside the stencil. And what I'm trying to do here is protect my um, my edges a little bit. Uh, I'll do this with my stencil so I don't have to worry about going back and trying to re-erase stuff again and again. So um, just take a, create a selection, slide it right inside here, so which is barely smaller than the stencil. And now I'm, this is going to become my work area. So I'm going to work in this spot right here. So um, I can use anything. Uh, I can try the custom brush here. It has a lot of different settings. So if you go down to, for example, textures, you can just grab something like the curly brush and use it real quick. So let's see how this looks. Now the one problem, uh, and it may do it, it looks like, yeah, I'm going to have a little bit of it. So one of the problems with the custom brush when I'm recording, uh, it lags, and that's what it just did. So um, maybe not the best one to use, but it, it, I like it because it does add texture in. So let me just grab the oil brush and let's see, switch to a color. Okay. Yeah, let's go airbrush instead. All right, let's try this. So this is a sphere, so I'm thinking, you know, how do I color a sphere? Um, it's going to wrap around it just like so. Okay. And I like I said, I always move the stencil. Look, always, so that's, if when you see me move the stencil, that's what I'm doing. I'm just kind of doing this. Let me just throw in some more color here. And using the stencil just to really get the textures and the feel for it. Uh, tell you what, I'm just going to go a little faster here so there we go so now you can see really the textures it gives it so I tell you what I'm gonna make a new layer and use the airbrush tool go a little darker I want to increase the shadow here uh, let's see okay oh by the way what I just did there to resize it it's hold shift and move the mouse to the right and it'll resize your brush so lower the opacity a little bit here because that's way too dark. And now you can see how it looks. I can play around with the colors a little more. And so some of my light's coming from the top left there. And so what I'm doing here is erasing just a little bit. Now let me go back here and I'll just erase some of this. I go back and forth on the layers, playing around with the contours and the the look of it and stuff. So I'll erase some of the main layer and some of this here. So remember when you're doing sphere, don't forget your reflected light, even on a planet. Um, so I'm going to do blurred frosting for my knife, and this will break it up this edge a little bit. Now let's see how this is working. Again, make this a little different. Eh, getting a little bit of lag again. And it's not too bad. I mean, it's giving me some... Um, Nice textures over top of that. But I think I'm going to have to play around a little more. So I'm going to go to blend mode. And I'm going to change it to, let's try darken first. See how that works. Yeah. It's okay. I think I'll go to multiply instead. So multiply. And so now it really, uh, instead of laying just over top of it, now it's part of the actual texture. So I'm going to grab a little bit different color here. And go back to paint this. Again, I don't care if it's an exact lineup. I can get it pretty close. Take the airbrush, I mean the palette knife, and um, smear it around a little bit. Now go back to the airbrush. 
airbrush in some of the color I want, but first I'm going to switch it over to big and subtle, which gives me a softer thing. And resize it, get this out of the way, resize it here, and just kind of put it in a little bit. There we go. Just adding some different texture. I could sit here and put around with this a little bit all day long, but I'm just going to play around with it a little bit more here just to give you a, more of a feel for it. All right, so I'm going to invert my selection again. This is just inverting around here so I can erase this extra part that I have. So now that really defines it, and you can see why I put it inside it so I didn't have a whole lot of extra stuff to mess around with. And I'm going to go down to Instant Blur or heavy blue frosting and see if I can soften this a little bit more. Uh, reverse my selection again, so I'm working inside it. And I want to soften some of these craters, really kind of push them down a little bit, if you will, and soften some of this edge too. Now I can use the palette knife through the stencil, so it'll still pick up some of the texture from the stencil, but it'll soften the stuff around it which works really great for when you're doing shadows. I do this on the mountains that I do all the time, and it works perfectly. But you can see here, see how it kind of pushed it around. It's really subtle, but it did make a change to it. And now I can go back in and soften it even more. So between the multiply layer and the messing with the stencil through, or you know, messing with the palette knife through the stencil, it really starts to combine them in a way that makes it look a little bit more organic and more natural. So I want to soften these edges a little bit. So I'm going to go down to Instant Blur. And let's see. Change my brush. Oh, wait. That's um, Control-Z. Uh, let me change my settings here real quick and soften this pressure down a little bit. If I want to blur it, I just don't want to obliterate it. There we go. Because, again, you're going to have atmospheric distortion that's going to keep the edges from being super crisp if you're doing it, you know, uh, a sphere like this or a moon like this, you're gonna you don't want those really super crisp edges. All right, so I just want to resize the stencil, get it a little bit centered back up, about the exact same size of what I got here, and I'm gonna go around the edges a little bit more again because it's gonna keep the texture of the stencil, but then still soften the edge. So let me just kind of go around and do that here. So there we go. So now I've got a little bit of the crispness, a little bit of the softness. So it really kind of plays with the eye to give it that three-dimensional look. And do the same up here on this multiply layer. There we go. Yeah, just a little bit more. I could putter with this a little, just forever, and that's kind of what I'm starting to do here. But uh, get back to focus, just kind of show you a little bit more of these techniques that you can do here to soften it and play around with it. And kind of push some of the craters back. So now, by selecting the layer concepts, I, I can grab it here. And because it's a stencil, it's not going to select everything. It's just going to select this. So now I can take the airbrush and really go in and paint on that part and, bring again, bring out some of the crispness. So remember, it's just push, pull, push, pull for what you want the uh, area to look like. And by just doing that, it gives a really nice uh, feel to it. So let me just um, deselect it with Control-D and see what it looks. So let me... Um, Oh, so there's another thing I wanted to show you that you can do with your stencil. So if you go to right-click and go to Hide Stencil, it can move it off from, oh, you see it? So if you see, want to see it again, you just go up here to, uh, let's see, it's not View. Oh, wait, no, it's over in Tools. I'm sorry. Uh, so uh, let's see, Stencil Options. Here it is. So you can show all stencils. And so there's the stencil. And apparently I had one from earlier. So let me just move this. Um, and then I can move it around. So again, right click on it and just uh, click remove stencil. Now it's gone off of here completely. It's not just hidden. So uh, if I was messing around with this and I was done with it, then all I'd have to do is just again, right click it, remove stencil. So there you go. 
So that's pretty much it. Again, I could sit here and putter around with this and everything else, but that's not the point of this video. The point is just to show you how to make a custom stencil and how to use it and how you can really use it to make something like a moon or mountains or something like that. So uh, I hope you've enjoyed this. I hope you got something out of it. And if you did, hey, leave me a comment down below and say, uh, I don't know, great stencil, just something like that. Just uh, let me know that you got something out of it and let me know if it's answered questions for you, if it spurred more questions. Uh, again, this is a response to another video. I had a uh, person asked a question and said, hey, you know, do a video on stencils. So that's what I'm doing. So the way I'm making these videos is I want to know what you want to see. So leave a question below, a comment. Um, just let me know what your thoughts are and I'll make another one to help out with however I can. So hopefully you like this. Uh, make sure to subscribe if you haven't already. Join us over on our Facebook group. Uh, I started one over there for private art lessons, which is really just more in-depth here. We can go back and forth and have an actual conversation. So you're welcome to join there. It's just starting up, uh, but we'd love to have you there. And um, you know, make sure to share the video, like the video, and uh, let me know your thoughts. So I appreciate it. Have a great rest of the day. Thanks.